Hey folks, what you're looking at is the motherboard that's been in my main computer for a little while. I think the last time I made a video about it, I had the H61 board in there. Uh, but I switched to Linux almost full time recently and I switched to this board. And I guess I just didn't think it was worth making a video just to swap the board out. But this is what was in there. Here's my prized Z68 motherboard that had all these nice features like the M SATA slot, the six SATA ports, and uh, you know, all the nice I.O. and everything. Well, this board, I, as I've discovered the hard way, has issues in the SATA department. Uh, I knew the P67 motherboards had issues with data corruption, but um, I didn't realize the Z68 boards could do the same thing in a different way. SATA dropouts apparently are an issue on, on some Z68 motherboards. And I was experiencing that problem on this one. My boot drive just died all of a sudden. Uh, well, the drive itself wasn't bad, but the EXT4 partition I was using just just absolutely annihilated itself for no reason. And the SATA dropouts uh, appear to be part of that issue because it's been it was throwing crap in the console weeks before it finally just croaked completely. So. This board's been quirky since I updated the BIOS and put that 3770K in it a, year, uh, a couple years ago. And uh, hasn't really been the same since. And it's gotten to the point where I just need to retire this board because the quirks are getting to the point where it's unusable. I don't want data corruption and data loss from SATA dropping out. That's not cool, man. So I'm taking the opportunity to upgrade myself a little bit. So. Let's take a look at what we got. All right, so we're still using the same case. So here's the disk setup. Two two terabyte hard drives. One's a uh, Western Digital and one's a Hitachi, or a Toshiba, actually. And above that, I have an 80 gigabyte Intel SSD as the boot drive, which holds the root partition and the swap partition. Yes, I know you're not supposed to do swap on SSDs, but I'm doing it anyway. Uh, and the two two terabyte hard drives are in RAID 1 ButterFS with each other. And this is all using Debian Linux. I've, I have Linux on this computer now. Uh, still got the PC power and cooling, 750 watt Mark III power supply. This thing's a beast. I love it. Uh, still have the Blu-ray drive in the front. LG1. And uh, the board is changing. Here's the graphics card, it's a 750 Ti, which I'm still keeping in there. But here's what's new, is this motherboard here. This is an ASRock H7, H97M Anniversary. This board was made for those Anniversary Pentiums that came out, or at least that's what it's geared towards, because it was a cheap board. I think it was 70 new, and I got it for $60 on sale. Either way, it's a really nice board. Uh, has a lot of features for the money I paid. $60 for a lot of the features that you used to have to buy full ATX boards to take advantage of. The only thing you'd get with a full ATX board over this one is more fa fan headers and that's about it. But take a look at this. I put the Hyper 212 Plus on there over top the CPU. The CPU I'm using in this for the main computer is a Core i3-4330 which is good enough because I'm using Linux now instead of Windows so I don't need a whole lot of processing power to get my daily routine of stuff done. The I.O. is much better on this board. Real PS2. Three video outputs for onboard video if I ever need it. So you get VGA, DVI, and HDMI. You get um, four USB 2.0 ports and two USB 3 ports. So I'm finally adding USB 3 uh, to my main setup in a proper way. Uh, you don't get a whole ton of expansion. You get the graphics card slot and you get two uh, X1 slots, but that's fine. That works, no problem. Uh, and you get front USB 3. And one of the features that I love about these newer micro ATX boards is you get six SATA ports pretty much standard now, which is really awesome. Uh, that's a lot better than the board I would have otherwise have been using in the main computer, which is this board, which is going into a different machine. Um, this is uh, one of my H61 motherboards. This one is the H97, which we'll be using. So, what's what's better about this board? Better I.O., 
uh, better audio. This has Elna audio, which if for any of you who have worked on old stereos that are Japanese, you'll recognize Elna as a capacitor manufacturer. That's exactly what's going on here. The, their capacitors are very good because they're Japanese made. And they really filter out the noise extremely well. So you don't get a whole lot of noise off of the motherboard uh, when plugging stuff into the onboard audio, which is important to me because I like sound. Uh, the memory bandwidth is a lot better because it's a Haswell-based setup. I have uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM right here with a bunch of Corsair Vengeance. The red sticks are exclusive to Newegg if you're wondering how I managed to get red-colored sticks. That's where they're from. So, there you have it. <laughs> um, other than that, there's not a whole lot of expansion. I mean, it's it's a pretty basic motherboard, but these sort of higher-end basic boards, I've had really good luck with. Something like that Z68 board that's a mid- to high-end board, I'd say that one's more mid-range. I get burned on those every time, no matter who, who I buy them from. I've had weird luck with... Uh, the only one I've really had good luck with is an ASRock board. Um, but even that was a cheap motherboard, too. So, I don't know. Every time I buy a mid- to high-end board, I have issues with it. Uh, they're just not made as well and made to be as stable as some of these uh, upper-end budget boards are. Um, as opposed to the super, super budget, know-nothing boards. These these are actually really good. Uh, ASRock has really uh, redeemed themselves, in my view. They used to be a cheap uh, budget era of... Uh, or budget area of Asus from motherboards, but they they separated from Asus a couple of years back, and since they've gone their own, their motherboards have gotten so much better. They're really good now, right up there with these gigabyte boards that I like so much. They're really nice. So there you go. No more mid or high end boards for me because I always have issues with them, no matter what the manufacturer is. I've had issues with Asus ones, gigabyte ones. You know, it 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 doesn't seem to matter. So, there you have it. That's the new motherboard and the new CPU. It's a Core i3-4330, which has Intel HD Graphics 4600 on it, which is a good for onboard video. If I ever lose my video card for whatever reason, that video will be adequate. Um, I put the, co the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Plus on here, and I had to raise the fan, as you can see, to make it clear the RAM. And it actually fits in my case somehow. I don't know how it does, but it does. And, uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, I have Linux installed on here, so what I'll do is I'll put this system together, and uh, I'll show you the Linux install that is on it. So, stay tuned for that. Okay, I have the main computer booted up, and since the power LED header did not fit on the board, I'm just going to use the LED fans as my power indicator. That works for me. <laughs> so, <clears throat> what do we have here? We have uh, we have the UEFI, which is very nice on these new ASRock boards. As you can see, I have the Core i3-4330 in there, which is a 3.5 gigahertz CPU. I have the 16 gigs of uh, Corsair RAM in there. You get a lot of configuration options, which is very nice. You can turn a lot of stuff on and off. BIOS is very feature-rich in this cheap motherboard. Cheap as in inexpensive, rather than cheap as in build quality. One thing I've noticed about the Haswell CPUs is they seem to run hot, even when you put a giant cooler like that on there, which leads me to believe that the thermal interface material that they use for the Haswell chips is not that great. Um, so, way to go, Intel. <laughs> Anyhow, um, well, the other thing that I like to mention is that the uh, you can make your own fan curves, which is really nice. So when the fan reaches a certain temperature, you can have the fan be at like 40%, then 60%, then 75%, then 80%, which is the curve that I have. That 80 I might raise up to 100 if it's not, not good enough, uh, but I think it will be for an i3. Um... But yeah, you can make your own fan curves, and if you if you don't want to customize your own, there are built-in ones like silent, standard, performance, and full speed. So there's a lot to choose from here. Chassis one fan setting I think I need to change, because as you can see, one of the fans is not spinning, and I have no clue why. 
That, I think, might be because there's a cable in the way. I'll have to check that. But you can see that there. I don't know why that's not spinning. Anyhow, uh, I'm going to fix that, and then uh, we'll boot into Linux. Okay, now we're booted into Debian. Let's take a look. As you can see, I'm using the Mate desktop. And for those of you who don't know the Mate desktop, it's basically GNOME 2 uh, brought back from the ashes. It's very nice. Uh, it's being developed constantly, and it's, uh, it's very nice. It's a very popular desktop environment now. Okay, so I've switched to Linux on every computer I possibly can, and it, it's been a really nice experience with Debian. Uh, this is specifically Debian 8 Jesse, uh, which came out recently, which is why, which is the time I decided to switch because it was a brand new version of Debian, so everything would be recent. Um, and it's performed very well. I've had some issues on some machines, but not on others. Um, it, it, it's been weird. It, like, my T61 below my, my X140E here, this machine, has had issues with it. But m most any other machine I own, aside from the X140E, has had no problems with it at all. Uh, here's my main computer, which is named Supernova. Uh, it's running Debian 8.1 Jesse, as you can see there, with the kernel 3.16.0-4. It's a 64-bit version, and there's the Core i3-4330, as you can see there. Uh, so, it's got all four threads and everything. Runs very nicely. It's very quick. Uh, not only is Linux quick, but it's quick booting off of the SSD with uh, the high bandwidth you get from Haswell, along with, with this just the i3 being pretty damn fast in general. So, that's pretty cool. Um, now, let me show you what I have installed here. Um, because I don't think I've shown you what I do on my Linux setups yet. I've sort of standardized on this. Accessories and education are kind of the same, but in games I've installed all the Gn old GNOME games you used to get on old versions of Ubuntu that I remember, like the five or more uh, robots, you know, Sudoku, a lot of all these old games here. Five or more is nice, and four, in a well, actually four in a row is really the big one. I also have Extreme Tux Racer installed, which is a classic game. DOSBox and ScumVM, of course, for the old games. Graphics, okay, we got GIMP, which comes with uh, the Mate desktop anyway, when you install Debian, and I have Inkscape here, which is basically like, uh, uh, it's like Adobe Illustrator, uh, it does uh, vector stuff. Under Internet, of course, we have Dropbox, FileZilla for FTP access, Google Chrome for web browsing, which is the main browser that I use. Mostly because you get an up-to-date version of Flash built into Chrome. Uh, you get HexChat, Ice Weasel, which is Debian's spin of Firefox. I put Skype on here, and I put Telegram as well. And, of course, Transmission comes... Actually, no, I installed Transmission for the BitTorrent client. Uh, there are others available, such as, uh, I think there's Deluge, um, QBitTorrent, and some others you can use. But Transmission's GTK native, so I chose that one. Uh... Office. You get LibreOffice, Writer, and Math, Impress, Draw, Calc, Base, all that good stuff. So you get full Office Suite. That comes with the Mate desktop as well. In the programming session, you have Sight. Now, what Sight is, is a text editor that is built for programmers. If you have ever used Notepad++ on Windows, you have used Sight. It is that this is the program from which Notepad++ is based from. So it's literally the same thing. You know, it's... there you, there you have it. <laughs> Under sound and video, I use Audacity for audio editing, of course. Easy tag is for editing ID3 tags and sound files. GUVC view lets you view a webcam and record with it. And of course, this is what I edit all these... all the videos I put on YouTube with now is open shot. It crashes sometimes, but not too, too often. Uh, it works quite well. Uh, I like it quite a bit. It's very simple. Uh, it tends to work. The only thing that I don't like about it is moving clips left and right in the timeline is real is a bit pokey. But other than that, it works great. Uh, I choose not to use Caden Live because I just I don't need anything that complicated. Sim I used Windows Movie Maker and iMovie before I used this for the most part. So it, simplicity is fine. Sound converter. This lets me con batch convert audio files, which is very nice. 
And of course VLC, because you use VLC to play everything, right? And of course I installed GDEB to install .deb packages. And uh, what else did I install? Flash Player, the traditional Flash Player for Firefox. Uh, compatibility and stuff like that. I really hope Adobe picks up Flash for Linux again, because that's kind of useful. Uh, at least for the animation aspect. I wouldn't use it for video anymore, but for animation it's still really nice. Uh, what else do I have in here? Not much else. I have in, I also have Gparted installed along with the NVIDIA proprietary driver. Uh, Gparted, of course, for editing partitions, reformatting disks, that kind of stuff. And, of course, the NVIDIA driver because there's a 750 Ti in this computer that I take full advantage of. So, and, of course, Synaptic for installing packages, for uh, installing software, mostly, that's in the repositories. So this has uh, served me very well. I switched to Linux, uh, when did I switch? I think it was in May or June of this year, something like that. I forget if I made a video about it or not, but I switched basically all over to Linux on every machine I can, apart from my school laptop here, which is the X140e, and the gaming rig over there. So that computer there, the gaming rig, obviously needs to run Windows because gaming. This computer needs to run Windows for school because of the uh, the IT the classes I'm taking for my IT minor. I need Microsoft Access and things like that for um, for some of my schoolwork. And I really don't feel like running them in virtual machines and messing around with that stuff when just running Windows 10 natively works just fine. Uh, but everything else, uh, everything else is uh, Linux, bedside computer, uh, a bunch of my other laptops. My main computer, my servers, it's all Debian as far as I can uh, as far as I can take it. I put Debian on everything I can unless it doesn't agree with it, uh, which would be this T61 down here. It does not agree with Debian at all. Neither does the X140e. So whenever I don't need Windows on the X140e anymore, it will get something besides Debian unless a newer version of Debian comes out that addresses the issues that I'm having. So, you know... That'll be all figured out. But, yeah, my switch over to Linux has been fine. I haven't had any problems with it. Uh, then again, I've been using Linux for about 10 years now. And uh, that experience helps a lot. Uh, usually in Linux, if something breaks that's stupid, you can more often than not fix it if you have the patience. But if you don't have any patience at all, um, don't put it on your main computer. <laughs> put it on another one and practice and gain the patience over time like I did. Uh, I know Linux pretty darn well now, so it's this is no big deal to me because I don't I I don't install a crap ton of software on Linux and and uh, just flood it with stuff. I I use the same set of applications every day for my daily uses, and that's what this main computer is now. It's really a daily use computer, uh, so it just needs to video edit, browse the web, run Second Life, uh, run Telegram and Skype and Teamspeak. Things like that. Uh, and, of course, do my video and audio editing that I like to do. So, it, it doesn't need to do a whole hell of a lot, but, uh, the, but the bare bones, basics of tasks. And it does all that very well. If I need Windows, I have the gaming computer and my laptop for that. Uh, so, I've put Linux where, uh, in as many, uh, bleh, I've put Linux where I can as much as possible, mainly because I don't like the data mining that's going on in Windows at all. It's a little bit um, terrifying, to be honest with you, uh, which is why I don't want to keep it on this laptop forever. I'm going to just because I, I need to not erase it when I have school going and all that kind of stuff, so... You know, but otherwise, I'm putting Linux where I can, and it's been a pretty good experience with Debian so far. You have to poke it a little bit to get it to work the way you want sometimes, but more often than not, once it's set up, it stays that way. It stays working. Uh, you have to update it manually, but that's fine. I'd rather have control of the updates than not, so... There you have it, folks. That is the main computer. I've switched over to Linux, and I've switched over to a Haswell-based system with an i3-4330 in it. Uh, so... Thanks to that board having problems, I got a little bit of an upgrade. The The board that went into this machine was actually supposed to go into another machine that you'll, uh, that you'll see in a, in a future video, but with that board dying, the, pe the plans kind of fell through, so my main computer got somewhat of an upgrade in I.O., but maybe a side grade in processor, basically. So, uh, you know, I mean, the i3, it's... 
The performance I don't think is as high as the Core i5, but the I/O on that motherboard uh, is worth is worth the upgrade alone. I can I have a big upgrade path on this Haswell platform anyway, so I could get the 4670K in the future if I really needed to. But I think this i3 will do just fine because this isn't running Windows anymore; it's running Linux, so it shouldn't need a whole lot to just run. So then is this uh, setup here. Uh, I'm still using the same. Topre Type Heaven keyboard, very nice keyboard, still love it, and of course the Microsoft mouse. So setup is largely the same, just changed out the board, really, and changed the operating system. Anyhow, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and have a good one, everybody. Ciao.